This video is brought to you by the Ashington and Draycott Community Page. Welcome to this short, explanatory video about the installation of full fibre broadband in this area. In this video, I will explain the installation process, the pricing, I will answer frequently asked questions, and I will explain what you need to do. First, let's look at the installation process. I hope that most people watching this video will be at least somewhat familiar with the installation process, or at the very least, the basic stages of the process in general. On screen now is the current status of both projects. You can see the various stages. We are at the proposal stage. Despite how simple OpenReach's description has made this stage seem, it is likely the most complicated one. First of all, enough vouchers must be pledged before we can proceed further. Additionally, we may need to set up a community interest company, and I will explain this more later. We must also wait for our funding request to either be approved or declined, and OpenReach state that this will take around 4 to 5 weeks. It is likely, however, that we will see delays through the Christmas period. Once all this has been done, and contracts have been signed, OpenReach will have a 12-month window to plan, assemble and install the infrastructure. There of course may be some disruption during this period. For properties who have claimed the government's gigabit voucher, OpenReach will install the new fibre up to the house free of charge. If you have a long driveway, for example, and OpenReach are required to install fibre along it to reach your property, you will not be charged so long as you have claimed a voucher. However, if a resident hasn't claimed a voucher, they will likely be charged to connect to the new fibre network which will not have been wired directly to their property. Let me reiterate, if you do not claim the voucher, you will most likely be charged to connect to the new network. Finally, once installation has finished, you will be able to order a service with any of the providers on screen. EE is soon to be added to this list too. When you order a service, an OpenReach engineer will come to your home and complete the fiber connection within your house, but more on this later. So, that was a brief summary of the installation process. Before we have a look at some frequently asked questions, I'd first like to go over pricing. The key point is that there are multiple quotes. One is our base quote, and the other is what I have called the target. The cost of the project is equal to the base quote, so I'm sure you're wondering why there is a much higher target. Well, the target is 130% of the base quote. The project can go ahead if we only manage to reach the base quote, but it would require us all to be involved in a community interest company in case some of the pledged vouchers could not be claimed. This is so that everyone is responsible if there is a funding shortage, not just the person who signed the contract. If, however, we reach the funding target, OpenReach would not require us to all be involved in a community interest company, as with more voucher pledges than required, there would be significant headroom even if some of the vouchers could not be claimed. I'd also like to point out that these quotes are now fixed and cannot change during the installation process. So, with that in mind, let's look at the current funding situation on the Draycott and Leamington side. At the time this video was made, we had exactly £87,000 of pledged vouchers. Our base quote is £79,858 with our target at £103,815.40. This means we need another £16,815.40 to reach our target. On the Ashington and Mudford side, we had exactly £40,000 at the time of recording. Our base quote is £52,217 with our target being £67,882.10. This means we need another £27,882.10. And there you have it. Moving on from pricing, we'll now look at some frequently asked questions. 
I'm concerned that we may end up worse off than before once this process has finished. Who is installing the fiber, and will it be an FTTP or FTTC connection? There are articles on many websites about people who have contacted their broadband provider, asked for an improvement, and ended up worse than before. This will not be the case in this situation. OpenReach are installing the fiber through their Community Fiber Partnership scheme, not some third-party vendor. You will be able to order an FTTP connection, which has guaranteed speeds of up to a gigabit per second, if you are included in the plans. I saw something about an installation fee. What is this? How much will it be? Well, there are two types of installation fee. One is an excess connection cost, which was described earlier in the video. It applies if you have not claimed a gigabit voucher, but then order a service on the new fiber network. The other type is a standard connection cost, which is essentially a fee for connecting to a provider's network. As there is no actual hardware installation involved, different providers will charge different amounts. The cost depends on which provider you choose, with some charging around £50 and others not charging at all. Why are there two separate projects? Well, when I started this project, it was with the aim of bringing just Ashington and Draycott fibre broadband. However, I was soon told by OpenReach that Ashington and Draycott were in fact in different exchanges, and fibre is not allowed to cross exchange boundaries. Thus, once I knew that the fibre had to come from both Ilchester and Mudford, it was obvious that more properties should be included in the plans. So, we are now left with two large-scale projects which cannot be merged into one larger one. When will this project be completed? Well, my answer to this is very basic and annoying. The project will begin when enough funding is gathered, and the fibre will then be installed within a 12-month window. That's the only timescale I've been given. And finally, We'll look at the most important part of the video, what you need to do. The first thing you'll need to do is re-pledge your voucher via Microsoft Forms. This is mainly because the Gigabit Voucher Scheme ends on the 31st of March, and we are therefore collecting the data ourselves for efficiency purposes. The list I have may also be out of date, hence why you'll need to re-pledge your voucher even if you have already. There are two separate forms, one for each exchange. As mentioned, we are collecting this data before a funding decision has been made, because we are acutely short of time. Please find the links to the forms in the description. The second thing you will need to do happens at a much later stage. You will receive an email from either myself or OpenReach stating that installation is finished. You will be asked to order a service from any of the providers mentioned earlier, and you must do so within a fortnight. As mentioned earlier, when you order a service, an OpenReach engineer will complete your fibre connection within your house for free, as it will only have been wired to the exterior of your property. If you do not order a service within a fortnight, your pledge to Gigabit Voucher will not be claimable. I say again. You must order a service within a fortnight of installation being complete, or your pledged voucher will not be claimable. There are also criteria that your new broadband contract must meet. It must be over 30 megabits per second, or, if you are lucky enough to have speeds faster than that already, your new broadband package must be at least double your current broadband speed. And finally, you will receive an email from the Gigabit Voucher Scheme at some stage during the process. This will be fairly self-explanatory, you'll just need to do as the email tells you. This will most likely be confirming your details by filling in a form. An example email is on screen now. It is also possible that you'll need to sign a contract with OpenReach at some stage during the process. If this is the case, you'll be sent an email and all will be explained. And that's it! I hope this video has given you a better understanding of the two projects. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch at contact at ashington-draycott.co.uk.